Hi everyone and welcome back to a new Java interview questions episode. Today we're going to talk about the class loader. But if, before we give a definition for the class loader, let's you know take some time and remember how the Java compilation and class loading process works. Assume that you have a program, you have written two classes, you know the a.java and b.java, and then you need to compile those classes. When after you compile those classes, you will get the corresponding bytecode and that bytecode is stored into dot class files now here on the right we have the java virtual machine which is part of the java runtime environment and somehow the java virtual machine needs to know how to you know fetch how to load these classes into main memory and to execute them and this is where the class loader comes in the Java class loader basically, you know, loads classes into the JVM, which, of course, after they are loaded, those classes will get, you know, passed to the execution engine. So, this is basically what the class loader does. You know, the class loader is used to load class files into the JVM at runtime. Okay, so, um, you know, class loader, you know, it loads classes, so I think this is a pretty, you know, um, easy to remember definition. But uh, those classes, you know, can be, you know, can have different functions. I mean, we can think of classes and, uh, you know, categorize them. For example, we have our own classes, you know, the classes that you write uh, in our programs. Um, we have uh, classes that are stored in third-party libraries. For example, I don't know, we are using a Spring application and of course then we have, you know, we have the Spring context, we have, you know, all those classes related to Spring that, you know, reside in a third-party jar file. And then of course we have uh, system classes, you know, that come bundled with Java. For example, Java Lang or all the classes in Java Util. We can think of them as core classes. And uh, because we have, you know, uh, different types of classes, we have different types of class loaders. And each class loader is responsible for loading a specific type of class into the JVM. Now, there are three main types of class loaders. We have the bootstrap class loader, the extension class loader, and the system class loader. The bootstrap class loader uh, loads all the Java core classes into the JVM. Like I said, all the classes that are in Java Lang or Java.util, for example. The extension class loader, you know, loads classes that are defined in jar files uh, located at, you know, Java home slash lib slash ext. Okay, so if you, if you open up, I don't know, um, file explorer or something like that, and you go to java home.lib.ext, you'll find that there are some jars in there. All the classes that are defined in those jars, you know, are loaded by the extension class loader. And then there's the system class loader, which basically loads classes from the class path. Now, if you are to simplify this explanation a little bit, the system class loader basically loads all the classes that you write in your program, as well as all the dependencies that, you know, um, are stored in third-party jar files. Okay, so now that we know uh, how the class loader works and you know different the different types of class loaders, let's take a little bit uh, of time and explore a simple example. I just created uh, a very basic Spring Boot application. You can basically use any type of application, but you know uh, I had it already opened. So we have a Spring Boot application, and I defined you know just one class a runner, which is a command line runner. And um, I want to see, I want to print out uh, the class loaders that are used to load specific classes. For example, I want to print the class loader for ArrayList. And I can do it, you know, by identifying the class, which is in Java Util, ArrayList, dot class, and then we have a method called getClassLoader. Then I want to print the class loader for runner, which is the current class. So I'm using the same method. And then I want to print a class loader for some arbitrary Spring class, which is basically a dependency in my case. So I want to print out the Spring application class loader. And Spring application 
basically is the class that uh, you know runs fires up the Spring Boot app. Okay, let's fire up this app and see what class loaders are used to load those three specific classes. Okay, the application started, and now uh, we can see here uh, the class loader for array list is null, and uh, null means this is the um, um, bootstrap class loader, you know, the class loader that is re responsible for loading classes from, you know, from Java itself, you know, it loads the core Java classes. Then the class loader for runner, which is a class that we wrote in this program, is the application class loader or the, you know, system class loader. And then the class loader for you know the um, Spring application class is again the app class loader or the system class loader. So uh, in this example, I try to show you how to you know print the class loader for various classes and to take a look and see that indeed various class loaders are used you know for various classes. Before we conclude this video, I would like to talk a little bit about the execution order of class loaders. So assume that we're trying to load a specific class. Well, the first class loader that tries to load that class is the system class loader or the application class loader. If the application class loader finds it, then okay, we stop here. If not, then the extension class loader will try to load that class. If it finds it, okay, we stop. If it doesn't find it, then the final one, the, the bootstrap class loader, will try to search for that class you know, in the core Java classes. If it finds it, we are done. But what happens if none of these class loaders can um, load, uh, can find and load that class? Well, in that case, we get an exception. You know, it's the infamous class not found exception. Each time you get this exception, it means that that class could not be found. It's not on the class path, uh, it's not in the extension uh, directory, and it's not a core Java class. So it probably means that you misconfigured your application somehow. Okay guys, uh, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. You can also find more um, software related articles on my blog at www.romaniancoder.com. Until the next episode, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.